Alexa, ask Sam's demo to remember, every human is mortal. Every human is mortal. Remember, Sam is a human. Sam is a human. Question, who is mortal? Sam is mortal. Remember, some living beings are humans. Some living beings are humans. Question, are some living beings mortal? Some living beings are mortal. Hello, so this week on Playing With Prologue, I am going to show you how to build an Alexa skill for natural language understanding. The skill is self-hosted on a Raspberry Prime, and in the end, I will talk about how you can help make Prologue a really useful tool for developing Alexa skills and getting them published as official Amazon Alexa skills. So what do we need to do in order to get this to happen? So the first thing we need to do is set up a domain name. Then you need to set up your LAN. Then you need to set up your HTTPS certificate. Then you have to go on the Amazon portal and set up your Amazon skill and uh, make the intent. Then we can actually get on to doing the prologue code and getting it all running. And then finally, we're going to talk about what was what we need to do to get a skill published and how you can help to do that. So to set up a domain name, now I'm assuming that you're going to be hosting this at your home address and so you've got a, a dynamic IP address from your internet service provider. So if you want to have a domain name point at your computer, you need to have a dynamic DNS system. So I used uh, noip.com where you can get a free domain and a small piece of software that will update the domain server with your IP address as it changes. The next thing you need to do is set up your LAN. So you need to give your, your computer or your Raspberry Pi a, a local static IP on your own home network. And you need to set your router to forward requests from port 443 to your Pi's IP address. Um, it's a good idea to have a reverse proxy, so I'm going to use Apache 2 and just get that to uh, point to the prologue server that will be on 443. Now, um, if you want any addresses to be redirected. So if you type in, in my example, samnews.ddns.net, and we want it to go to HTTPS, then we can put this redirect in as well. Once you've um, got Apache set up like that, then uh, just stop Apache and stop any other service you've got running for setting up your HTTPS certificate. So I followed this tutorial here, which shows you how to get a certificate for um, let's encrypt that you can use with SWI Prolog. Um, Amazon don't actually support let's encrypt for a published skill, but it does work for a demo. Um, you could also use a, a self signed certificate. Um, this tutorial goes into all of these options, so it, it's fine for that. Um, if you want to have a published skill, then I think you need to pay for a certificate from a different authority. So now we can go on to setting up the Amazon skill. Okay, so you need to go to developer.amazon.com and sign up for an account if you haven't got one, or sign into an account if you do. Then you simply go to Alexa, and Alexa Skills Kit is what we're doing, so you need to click on that one, get started. And if you've not made a skill before, then you're going to click Add New Skill. Um, I've already got one, so I'm going to click my skill, Sam's Test 1. And you're going to go through this checklist to get your skill published. So important things are your application ID, you'll need that, um, the name, um, what you want to call your skill, um, and a really important one is your invocation name. So I've just called mine Sam's Demo. So this means that I will ask Alexa, use Sam's Demo. Then we can go on to the interaction model. And the idea here is to build intents. So what Alexa is going to do is take um, your utterance and map it to an intent. Um, and that's going to affect the JSON that the Alexa service is going to send to your skill service that's running on your Raspberry Pi. So when you're here, um, I'd recommend watching these three videos. They go into a lot more detail. Um, but basically, you're going to create 
add in a tent and you're, you're going to go through the properties that your intent is going to have. So to start with, I'm just going to show you how to make a really simple Alexa service that's going to just get a new fact. So we're going to have some facts stored in our Prolog database and we're going to have some utterances that are going to map to getting those facts. So this is where you train um, the Alexa service to know which intent to invoke. So I've just got things like give me a fact, get a fact. Um, obviously the more complex things and um, the more data you put in here, then that will be better. And you click build model and that will train um, the model that will um, map these kind of sample utterances to um, the fact that we're going to invoke this get a new fact intent. Next you go back onto configuration. Here you need to put your domain name and um, where your handle is going to be. So mine's just that. Um, I've set this as HTTPS. I'm in Europe. Um, I'm not doing anything where I'm mapping to uh, existing accounts. I think you can get it to um, map to like Facebook accounts or Just Eat accounts or Uber accounts. And I don't want any permissions at the moment, so I can just have it like that. So SSL certificate, then I'm just going to um, select here my development endpoint as a certificate from a trusted certificate authority. Um, that works fine um, at the moment with my Let's Encrypt certificate authority, um, but it may not for other people. Um, you might need to have a paid for certificate authority. You can also do this um, self signed thing for testing, but not for actual published skills. Okay, so now we're going to talk about actually writing the prolog code that's going to be invoked for our skill and what particular code we want to invoke for the get a fact intent. So if you're doing this on the Raspberry Pi, then make sure you've installed SWI Prolog. The best thing to do is clone this from Git and build it yourself. And um, don't just do sudo apt get as you'll probably get an old version. If you've never written a web application in Prolog, then look at Anne's really excellent tutorial on writing web applications. That's here. And that will really get you up to speed quickly. But what we're actually doing here is really simple. The basic idea is we're going to make an, a handler. We're going to get an intent. So we work out what intent we've been sent. We're going to build a response based on that. And then we're going to reply. So this is our handler code. So the first thing we're going to do is just read the JSON file into a, a prolog dict. So if you haven't come across dicts before, then there's something that are specific to SWI prolog 7. Um, so go and read up on that if you haven't seen those before. But they're a really useful data structure and really useful for doing things with JSON. Our main code here is going to handle dict, so it's going to basically take the, the JSON input and we're going to build a JSON output. Then we're just going to reply JSON, so that's going to serialize that and send it back out to the Alexa service. So handle dict, we need to the first thing we need to do is get the intent. So what intent are we um, getting from the Alexa service? And that's going to decide what code we want to run. So we're going to use this get intent. So this is all using the the dict stuff of SWI Prolog Seven. So we're going to get the request object from dict in, then we're going to get the intent object from the request object, and then we're going to get the name from the intent name. Okay, so intent dict out is the main predicate that we're going to use, um, and at the moment it's just got one clause, because we're just handling the, the one intent get a new fact. So this is going to match get a new fact. And we're just going to call this predicate answers, which is going to return a random message. And then we're going to build up a JSON reply. So answers is just a random member. We've got a list of random facts. Um, because I'm interested in walruses, we've got a lot of walrus facts. And so this will be here. My JSON answer, this is going to be the, the dict that's going to match the response that the Amazon Alexa service is expecting. Um, we've got should end session false here, so it's going to keep the session open. Um, not really uh, needed for this get a fact um, intent, but when we do the other intents, then 
you want to keep the session running. And so we're just going to put the message that we want to say back here. So what do we need to do now? We need to start the prologue service. So make sure Apache is running, get your prologue um, service working, and then it, we should be good to go. So we can check that it works with Amazon and we can try it with Alexa. If you don't have an Echo, then you can use the website um, echosim.io, which will um, simulate uh, an Alexa Echo device. Alexa, ask Sam's demo to get a fact. There are two species of walrus, Pacific and Atlantic. Okay, so if we go back onto the Amazon uh, service site, and we can go onto this test section here, and we can go down to the service simulator, and we're going to put in an utterance. So I'm going to just type get a fact. And then I'm going to ask Sam's test one. And you'll see what the request object that was sent, all the information here, and what our Raspberry Pi Prolog code has responded. Here it's responded, walruses live in herds. OK, so now that we've uh, made a really simple skill with Alexa that works, let's work, move on and do some more interesting stuff with some natural language understanding. So the skill that we demonstrated at the beginning of this video is based on uh, Chapter 7 of Simply Logical by Peter Flat. So this is a book that's free and online here, so you can get the PDF here. There's also a Swish version here. And so we're not going to go into a lot of detail about the code here. Um, just going to show what changes we've made to that code to get it to work with uh, Amazon Alexa. Um, obviously you can read the chapter to find out exactly how the code works. So basically what we need to do is set up two extra intents. So we're going to have an intent which is remember and another intent called question. And both of these are going to have some custom slots. Now the interesting thing with developing a natural language understanding tool with Prolog and Alexa is getting the balance between what do you want the Alexa service to do versus what do you want the Prolog code to do. So Alexa will try and pull out information from your utterance and put them into slots. So this can be really useful um, it allows you to say things in a variety of ways and the Alexa service will be clever enough to uh, decide which bits in that sentence were information you want to know and put them into slots. But we want to try and do some of our the natural language processing on the prologue end. So our slots are basically going to be kind of capsules where we're going to try and capture everything that the, the person says um, after we've identified that they've said that they want to use the remember or question intent. You could just have one intent and try and pull out the grammar from whatever is captured. Um, but the way I've done it at the moment is to have uh, an intent for remembering things and an intent for questioning things. So let's have a look at the um, setup on Amazon to how we've got that set up. OK, so we're back on the skill builder dashboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these two extra intents we've got. So I've got question and remember. And so for these, both these um, intents, I've built some slots. So I've just got my slot and question slot. So the my slot is for the remember. I could have called that remember, but I was just experimenting to start with. So we make the intents. And so we give some information and then the slot value. So we're going to train this. So I've got tell prologue demo to note that, to remember, different things like that, which we're going to train. And then we're going to have the slot. So we're going to try and capture all of the things that the person utters after they've said that. So in my slot, I've just put some ideas of value. So I'm, I've just put some of the sentences that I'm going to say. So some living beings are human, some living beings are mortal, Sam is mortal, Sam is a human, every human is mortal. Again. If you were doing this properly, you'd probably want to just fill this with thousands of different things that people might want to say. So then that the model that we build from that will try and extract the the things that the person has said. And so again, once we've got the things that the Amazon has interpreted into that slot, 
we can then play around with it in the prologue code. And in the question slot, we've said we've got, are some living beings, are some humans, is Sam mortal, who is mortal? Some example questions that we want to capture. So the question slot, we've just got blank and the question slot, and we've got to question. So you might say something like, Alexa, ask Sam's demo to question who is mortal. Or Alexa, ask Sam's demo who, who is mortal. And then remember slot, Alexa, tell prologue demo to remember Sam is mortal. Okay, so now we're going to look at the prologue code for these two new intents. So for the remember intent, what we need to do is be able to um, get the session object from the dict in and get the slot values. So all of this get dict stuff here is just getting the session ID and the slot values. The reason why we want the session ID is to be able to keep up this conversation. So in the original code, we have a recursive loop in the, in the original simply logical code we have a recursive loop which is maintaining the conversation state here we're going to store that um, just in the prologue database so we're going to get the um, like we say this the slot values and that's going to come as a string so we're just going to split that up and turn that into a list of words and then we can use our grammar sentence um, to get all the facts from the, the sentence and assert them with um, this session ID fact term. So for each um, fact that we've got out of that sentence, we're going to uh, assert the value. Um, then we've just got this in a kind of if thing here. So basically, as long as the um, grammar passes it, then we're, we're gonna respond with what was said. So we're just gonna repeat what was said um, but we're also going to repeat what I said, even if the grammar doesn't pass, um, just to help us with debugging. So the, the next clause for intent dict out is for the question one. And again, we're going to get the session object and we're going to get the slot value. It's the same as before. Um, I just used portray clause here just to see um, what was actually being put onto um, what was being received so I could see it on the screen while I was debugging it, but you don't need that there. Again, we need, we're going to split the, the string up and turn it into a list of words. And again, we're going to try and pass um, the query with um, our question grammar. And then we're going to try and prove um, the query with the session ID to get the answer that we want to respond with. So again, we've got this in a kind of if statement here. So um, if the the phrase passes and we can prove the question then we're going to get an answer and we're going to reply with that and um, otherwise we just want to repeat um, what was given to us so that again we can help with debugging why, why didn't it pass but normally this is going to happen that what we've said is going to be recognized by our grammar we're going to be able to prove the question correctly and we can just respond with the answer that we're going to build up so to prove the question um, Basically, for that particular session ID, we're going to find all of the asserted facts so that this is for that session what conversation we've had. Um, obviously, at the moment, we're not ever getting rid of our session ID facts, so they're just going to build up forever, but it's, it's a very small amount of data, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But if you had a real life system, you'd probably clear this out every so often. And then this code is basically the same as the simply logical. We're going to prove the query using the rule base, transform it, and um, build up this answer again. This is the meta interpreter that we use for proving um, the question from the rule base. Um, this is the same as the simply logical code. Um, this is just some helper predicates for that as well. Alexa, ask Sam's demo to remember every human is mortal. Every human is mortal. Remember, Sam is a human. Sam is a human. Question, who is mortal? Sam is mortal. Remember, some living beings are humans. 
Some living beings are humans. Question. Are some living beings mortal? Some living beings are mortal. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So that's really neat and um, we really like the project but what about actually publishing this skill on the Amazon developer system and maybe making some money out of it? Well the problem is that we need to authenticate the Alexa requests and I've tried to do this and I've been helped by um, some people on Stack Overflow notably Matt but it's not there yet, I haven't got it working. So if you think Alexa skills are a good use of Prolog and we all know have some active Prolog projects out there where people are um, doing interesting things with Alexa, then we need to have people contribute and get this working. It shouldn't be so difficult. We've got the, the Java code so that Amazon provides, so we just need to translate that into Prolog. Um, have a look at the GitHub and maybe together we can write this Authenticate Alexa. Even if we can't get that working, it's still neat having it as a project on your own. It will work with your own Echo at home. So if you just want to have something that you control and works on your Echo at home, then what we've gone through here in today's video will work for that. Thanks for watching and uh, keep playing with Prologue.